Hi, my name is Dr. Jacob Mursky, and I'm a primary care doctor at MGH Revere. High blood pressure, or hypertension as you might have heard it called, is one of the most common medical conditions in America. It is also one of the largest risk factors for heart attacks, heart failure, kidney disease, blindness, sexual dysfunction, and strokes. I'd like to review some basic information about high blood pressure and also introduce many things that you can do with the use of medications to keep your blood pressure in a healthy range. First, I want to make sure that you are familiar with the numbers that your medical team refers to when they talk about your blood pressure. Blood pressure is defined as systolic over diastolic. You might also have heard this as the top number over the bottom number. Although there is much debate in the medical community about what blood pressure numbers are healthy, most recommendations are for the top number, or systolic blood pressure, to be less than 130 to 140, and most recommendations are for the bottom number, or diastolic blood pressure, to be less than 80 or 90. Do you know what your goal blood pressure is? Your medical team might have asked you to check your blood pressure at home. When you do this, make sure to use an automatic cuff that fits your arm. Most of these go over the upper arm. It is always a good idea to bring your cuff into the clinic to make sure that the numbers you are reading at home are similar to the numbers that are read in the clinic setting. When you check your blood pressure at home, rest in a chair for at least five minutes. Sit still with your feet flat on the floor and your back straight and take at least two readings that are one minute apart. The numbers that you check at home can be very helpful in managing your blood pressure when you see your medical team. Most patients are unsure about all of the factors that contribute to high blood pressure. In addition to taking medications, there are several things that you can do to lower your blood pressure. The most important factors are regular exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, and eating a nutritious diet that is low in salt. For exercise, the national recommendation for physical activity is to enjoy 150 minutes a week. This can be exercise at the gym, but can also include group exercise activities like classes, exercise that you can do at home, and even brisk walking. From a diet perspective, it is important to eat well-balanced meals that include fruits, vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy products, lean proteins such as fish and poultry, and nuts and legumes. Salt is one of the biggest dietary factors that raises blood pressure, and most of the salt that we eat comes from processed foods and canned foods. Next time that you're at the supermarket, make sure to look at the nutrition label and focus on the sodium content. The national recommendation for salt intake is usually around less than 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day. You might be surprised at how much salt is in some of your favorite foods, so be sure to take a look next time you can. Many supermarkets carry products that are low in sodium, so you can look out for those products in particular. You can also try to explore healthy and nutritious recipes at home that are low in sodium, and many of these recipes are widely available online. Other things that you can do to lower your blood pressure include reducing the amount of alcohol that you drink, stopping cigarette smoking, if that is something you do, reducing the amount of caffeinated drinks that you consume, lowering your stress levels, ensuring a good night's sleep, and taking good care of other medical conditions that are associated with high blood pressure, such as obstructive sleep apnea and kidney disease, to mention just a couple. If you'd like to learn more about how to lower your blood pressure, I encourage you to go to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website, www.cdc.gov slash blood pressure. You can also log on to PCOI to find helpful patient education materials. Finally, it is always a good idea to talk with your primary care team about ways that you can lower your blood pressure.